Hold on, why is this not going live? Hold on, give me a moment. Oh, hey, hey guys, now. Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. So come get some. Cromcon. Cromcon. Sorry. The Transformers more than meets the eye. Hey guys, this is Christy. It's me for lunch hour. It is, and technically Rob is on his lunch hour. He's here for <laughs> Turner Family of Terrors and he is going to go and comment about it. I will make a couple of announcements right now just to say he's going to be on for a little bit because he's really literally on his lunch hour. Uh, we got, I got Metal Art coming up on the 7th. Sorry about that squeaking. I need to oil my fucking fan. It is going to be coming up on the 7th. I will be in Oregon for a day till 4 because I have an early flight that day. But come see me. Go pick up real copies of Demon Bitch and have a great time there. Then we got Demon Bitch, I Hate You All. This is a campaign currently running. Uh, Rob and I are actually, we kind of are running our campaigns at the same time. I started on the 12th. He started on, I think, you, the 18th, right? 18th or 19th, one of those days. Yeah, and we, we I've actually done a I've actually done a pinup for this like right here. It's a variant cover, variant cover C. That's one of the rewards you get, and that's what kind of it's going to look like in book form. But I've Turner Family Tears is the current um, current iteration and, and current Kickstarter. It's volume four, right? Volume four, yes, four oh. of a um, four chapter mini series. Yeah, and yeah. so and, uh, so this is the last chapter. This is the last chapter of this story. Um, we have sort of a, a epic little twist at the end, with kind of which kind of sets it up for future stories. So, um, but yeah, but this is like a big a, a achievement for me, um, professionally and personally, to kind of get to um, this chapter. And yeah, and so uh, we're on Kickstarter now, and it's it's going real well. Yeah, I'm really happy about it. I, it's kind of funny because like when I read it, because guys, I've read the first few books because I had to read it to kind of or also reference to kind of have an idea of what the book was like. I mean, there's like this is the variant covers of the these three right here. They're the variant covers of this Kickstarter, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, we have. Um, this is the variant cover B um, uh, illustrated by Kyle Roberts and colored by Wes Hartman. Mm -hmm. And so this is what I, I kind of like to title my different co covers. So this one is the Cthulhu Returns mm -hmm. cover. And we have the so Sophie Attacks cover, which you um, uh, drew, which is awesome. And then our main, our main cover is the cryptid cover uh, A, illustrated by um, Easton Hawk. And mm -hmm. uh, Easton is like a master of like American cryptid uh, pinups. And so I've worked with him. This is our third um, st uh, cover, and he's done the standard issue um, cover for the last, for including this one for three three comics. Yeah, yeah. He does have that look, like that pulpy look. Well, this yeah. one has a pulpy look, but it's different. It's more comic. Yeah, this one is more. He he does a great job with like wrinkles and crevices, and um, just kind of his eyes are, are really um, really cool. Um, Easton brings a lot of uh, crazy emotion to the <laughs> to the monsters, and um, yeah, so we're excited. We have we, I, I I work a lot. Uh, I take a lot of time with my artists um, mm -hmm. to come up with um, some really cool covers, and uh, we also have a, another pinup in the book by J.P. Harrington. Uh, yeah. He's back. He does a, a pinup for us. But yeah, but we, I contacted you, Christy. I, I, I was, uh, became familiar with your work um, a year or two ago with um, your story in Nightmare Theater One. And um, yeah, I've just been following your work and getting a demon bitch. And uh, it's, it's been cool. You have like, you have a unique voice 
in the comics world and it's aw- and it's uh, awesome and so uh, it's profane and profound and uh, so I definitely wanted to work with you for this uh, uh, Kickstarter and then I was just gonna have you do a pinup for me and put it as back matter but then it just it, it, it came out so cool and I have not done a black and white cover yet and so this uh-huh. is the this is the sixth cover we've done um, for uh no it's no i take that back this is the the ninth nine i have nine books so far of turner family terrors nine floppies um Mm -hmm. including variant covers and we haven't had a black and white one so uh i i saw you pin up and i was like there it is that's what's that's that is the perfect accent to um to our other covers and and it's been going well we've got a, a a tier where people pick up all three and covers and we sold a bunch of those, and so it's good, really good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's funny because it's like you're such like a nice family guy, and I've met your kids like briefly. Um, <laughs> and I'm just thinking, Sophie's after your I forgot your daughter's name. I didn't get to talk with her that much, but she looks a lot like Sophie. And it's like, did yeah. you write her after Sophie in a way? Does she of have? Of course. That? Like, yeah, yeah, of course. I get so much inspiration from my family. Um, I kind of tell people that. Um, I'm just kind of like this bumbling dad who's trying to not, um, uh, piss off his wife and screw up his kids. And it's like that kind of, uh, all these stories and anecdotes that I kind of draw from my own family, especially my daughter. My daughter is a handful. She is, she's a little terror of the family. And I've just kind of taken that inspiration to the nth degree to kind of, uh, to create Turner family terrors. You know, it's, it's mainly, it's really Krish family terrors is what it is, but uh, just with uh, changing the name. And and that was fun. Free comic book day at the comic book. Uh, yeah. uh, my daughter uh, took took over my sta- uh, my signings there and started signing signing stuff for people. And, and I don't really let my kids read the book because it's got some, there's no nudity in it, uh, but there's like a lot of subject matter, adult subject matter. And well, it's so a lot my, of language too, but yeah, a lot of language. But come to think of it, we have some of that language in our house. It's not really that big of a deal. But uh, <laughs> my uh, my son was reading that. That my son was uh, reading copies of my book at uh, the comic bug, and so I had to try to g- grab those away from him. But uh, <laughs> but it was good. We had a good time. Yeah, I remember that feud that Stephen Prince and I. He just messaged me. He said he'd like put me in the update, but. <laughs> Awesome. We had this feud going on. It, we fuck with each other all the time. Like I know. Like, if Steve, if anybody knows what Steven looks like, he does Monster Matador, which is very talented. He actually did the intro to the kids' book, The Demon Bee Meets Mr. F Word. And um, <laughs> this is what I say. Which I, like. Oh, which I picked up, by the way. I picked oh, up yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you contributed. That was awesome. No, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, uh, yes, yes. And so I saw that Christy had children's book, and I was like, I have got to read that uh, that mother right there. So I, I immediately grabbed a copy of that. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, really crazy, too, because it's, like, when I watch – when it's just funny as hell to me because it's, like – I, I just love, it's kind of reminds me, it's sort of weird. It sort of reminds me of the family of Rick and Morty meets yeah. the Venture Brothers. Like that okay. whole like weird thing, even though Morty, Rick, Rick and Morty's weird, but yeah. it's like Rick and Morty, like the, he, the family dynamic reminds me of it. Not necessarily Rick and Morty, yeah. even though Rick's kind of part of the family, but it's like the family tell how they bicker and scream at each other. And then the, and then it's like the Venture Brothers, because you have that other level of dysfunction with Dr. Venture and like his kids, or you find out later that they're cloned and they're kind of like, you know, like stupid or they're kind of subpar intelligent or something. And yeah. I guess it's supposed to be like, he was supposed to be Johnny Quest, who was this guy, that kid that would run around. And then he grew up to be old and miserable kind of thing because <laughs> like he doesn't have a wife and shit, but he has two kids and they're just all stupid and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's funny. It, it's just, a, it's just funny because how they yell it. I think it's like how they yell at each other. Like in Rick and Morty, the family kind of yells at each other in a certain yeah. way. In Turner Family Terrors, they sort of speak to each more, mother more like in how the Venture Brothers are, like how they're screaming at each other and shit. Yeah, those are, I mean, I draw a lot of them from my own, uh, unfortunately, from my own uh, arguments at home. But like, yeah, they're, they're, and that's funny. It's like they're, my characters are usually pissed, annoyed at each other or pissed off at each other. And it, that's really where we get a lot of the humor 
And um, I, I, I have a lot of like, I have a few like quiet moments where they're not screaming or they're not pissed at each other. And those are nice and sweet. And that kind of sets up the dynamic of the family and, and, and you, that, that resonates, but also when they get, you know, when they're pissed at each other, like that's, people can relate to that as well. And so that's, I think people, I think people enjoy the book because they, they see their, their own uh, family and um, uh, it's, their own situations, but it's kind of cranked to the to cranked up to 11 um, with the Turner family. So people yeah. can like, people can laugh at these guys and maybe they are, are glad that their own personal life isn't as crazy yeah. as that. So uh, if you're, if you guys are wondering what I'm drawing in the thing, so Robert came up with this crazy, but really cool idea to kind of merge our two campaigns together. And that is a print of, Sophie and Demon Bitch going at it with each other. Now, you want to get into the details of how they can get this awesome print. Yes. Yeah, so um, I was trying to think of a way that we could do some so, some interesting cross promotion for our campaigns, and so I thought of this idea. We'll we'll do a, a, a crossover print. Um, so Christy's gonna gonna draw this now, and backers of both uh, campaigns, the Turner Family Terrors. Uh, campaign that's going on right now for issues one through four and the demon bitch I hate you all uh, Kickstarter if you back both campaigns at the digital level you can get a digital high-res copy of this and uh, backers at the physical level will get a physical mini print and I am I am going to I'm going to sign it and I'm going to track down Christy in LA somewhere and I'll get her to sign these these bad boys too and um, we will put them in uh, to your uh, Gemini uh, cases, and uh, you'll be you'll you'll get these uh, limited edition, you know, one of a kind prints uh, for backing uh, both campaigns. So, and just just as a writer, like I would say, the the most fun I have is working with artists and have seeing what they do um because they're insanely talented and i can't do any of that so i will tell them what i want and then uh they come up with they they draw it and then they i get an email and uh it, i see the art and it is um it, it's, it's fantastic seeing this stuff come to life and i christy came up with an idea and so I, i'm just letting her roll I'm I'm letting her roll with it, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this thing uh, come come to life. I gave her some more reference uh, images a little while ago, and she had a cool idea to have um, demon bitch and a uh, little uh, sweet little Sophia go at it. Well, who is this other character that you okay, have so here? This is this is uh this is uh basically they're going at it right here. Okay. You got them on top of a mountain, so it'll look more epic, you know. But it's like, so it's another character of mine um, called Shipbird, right? And it's based off like a character that thinks that they're like this really beautiful tropical bird, but really they're a silly goose and they're <laughs> filthy and nasty and mangy. And <laughs> like, it's like all of my characters in Demon Bitch always get involved with some sort of drama. Like okay. they're, they're just like, they're basically self-effacing assholes that like there's family drama, you know, like his kids, kids are kind of trying to learn things and interact with each other and the family. And obviously there's immaturity because they're kid children, you know, they're learning how to interact with people properly and all that. And parents are only as going to be as good as they can be, you know, with their issues and stuff. So uh -huh. there's a lot of bickering and yelling and stuff, but this is like self-effaced drama, like, you know, stupid relationship choices you know, yeah. bad choices, drug abuse. I mean, obviously there's no <laughs> obvious drug abuse here, but it's like one of those things in our culture, like whenever we see something fucked up go down, we're like, fight, 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 fight. You know, like we get, yeah. I mean, that's been a, I mean, people have been going like, oh, the internet. It's like, no, that's been time immemorial. I and mean, look at mobs, look at like hangings, look at lynchings in general, like the drama is there. And I'm not trying to say drama, like to minimize the awfulness of some of these things. But that's kind of how we are now. It's like mostly all this stuff is online, where everybody gangs up on each other and crap like that, you know. And again, I know I use something pretty intense like that, but it's like when you see some of those online fights, like you've seen, like how some people like gang up on each other. It is like that almost in a way. Yeah, I, tr I try. I try my best to avoid 
Oh, that's yeah. And not, I think there's a human need for drama, and I'm not, not trying to say it's sh- good. Yes. But that's what Springer did. He he fulfilled that need along with more. <laughs> like remember the fucking KKK guys with a oh uh, yeah. Them? bunch of like black dudes and stuff and one of them said and then then they would throw a chair at each other and shit yeah. and broke his nose i mean i don't i didn't see that happen but i remember when it happened yeah. so um oh, the good old I, jerry springer show yeah god rest his soul i mean i gotta say sometimes i think there are people that exist like that that kind of ease the pressure in society so we don't blow up sometimes yeah you have that i mean i admit i think everybody has a has a certain desire for excitement which can translate into wanting drama why do you think we had reality tv why did we have talk shows you know things like that a lot of times talk shows aren't really talk shows it's more tabloid tv now uh katrin asked like are people in the comic stuff section superficial sometimes and she was like going there were some there were some are coming across fairly structured and quite determined by the way i am a rookie you probably noticed that i think she's from germany she's a long time viewer of mine she's very nice and Joe actually backed one of my books. So Joe, okay. you should probably go over there and get a fucking like print too. When you back fa- Turner Family Terrors, I've thrown the link in the thing. If you don't have it, I'll I'll try to send it to you. Here's the thing that's annoying about Facebook is that they're kind of re- randomly restricting IMs. So yeah, sorry, you've been guys. you've been having an issue with that. Yeah, it's been doing that. I think they, it knows that I don't like paying for the fucking ads, so they get mad at me. And they just mm-hmm. say, well, we're going to fuck you up. I'm like, oh, okay, that's okay. Yeah. So I go to people's Facebook pages and say, hey, I tried to DM you, but it wouldn't let me, so could you talk to me? But I feel kind of bad putting it on blast, but yeah. So what was Ka- what was Catherine's question? She's she's a rookie, and she has... She was asking... Sorry, I got to put up here. I apologize. I'm, like, running around. Uh, like hey, Quentin, some... what's up? Yeah, he's a friend of mine. He sometimes goes on here. Hold on. Hey, Quentin. So, so this is what he said. Are the people in the comic stu- stuff section superficial sometimes? Huh. I mean, I, it, I, the people that I meet, everyone's, spe- most of them are, are pretty, pretty genuine and, um, you know, they're, they're eager to, to help people out. Um, and the cool thing about, I mean, the, the one thing about comics is that like a lot, most of the people that are into comics are because they're, they're real fans and, um, they just, they just love, love the medium. They love comics. Um, they love telling stories and cause a lot, cause you, you don't, you, a lot of times you don't make a whole lot of money at it. You do it because you love it. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so, and, and I, that's where I come from. I definitely come from. And uh, uh, the side where, you know, I, I, I enjoy Kickstarter because I can bring my own books um, to Kickstarter uh, to, to fund them. But I also get to I, I get to help other people see their own projects um, come to life and I, I help help my friends and colleagues and other projects just, um, you know, cross the finish line and and. Um, and, and, and that's, that's, that's a big reason why, um, you know, that's, it's, that's the, uh, the power of Kickstarter. And, um, so yeah, I mean, of course there's, there, there are, I don't know, superficial or, or, um, what, what, what did she said? But I, you know, I, I don't, I don't really deal with them too much. There's, there's so many people with good hearts and, uh, you know. Even even if the every now and then they'll they'll say some profanity like uh, Christy, but um, uh, <laughs> I, once you get past that, you realize she's a she's an incredibly sweet person. So uh, so there yeah. you go. Yeah, sometimes people like it's funny because like a lot of one person said, "Do you know how nice you are?" Because you know I noticed that <laughs> if you're really nice, like the fact that you're nice, you know, blah blah blah, you know. Yeah. So it's like, you know, do you know how nice you are? It's like people wouldn't notice that, you know, but at the same time, oh, by the way, Quentin says hi, but, uh, What's up, yeah. Quentin? how you doing, man? Like Mog, actually, there's a story. Cause I was on one-on-one tales when COVID was wrapping up and they did mm. that offline storytelling thing. And so we did that. And at first Mel, like Mel and Mog, we only met online and we were going to meet each other. We met each other at a comic store and when she was about to meet me, she was telling her husband, like, 
oh, I don't know. Christy's kind of scary or something. <laughs> no, I don't think she is. And she met me and like, we've hit it off. So it's like, she thought it was good. Hey, Don, how's it going? Yeah, Don, guess what? There is a Don. Kickstarter guest that I have on here. And let me see if I can get that little fucker on here. Sorry. I have, to, with all the monitors, sometimes it won't show my, um, my stuff right. Okay. Um, but it, I can go copy. I'm going to have to do it one time. So it's like once, like one at a time, unfortunately. Here's Turner Family Tarot. This is a book. This is a project I personally worked on. And right now we have this deal. If you back my Kickstarter and his, Robert's, um, it will be fucking funny because like you'll get a print, which I'm working on right now on this live stream right here. It's come. It's coming together right here. Yeah. So, right. Uh, so this is this is exciting. Yeah, and depending me. on what you back on both of our campaigns, this has both, you will get one signed by the both of us. Yes. And uh, if you're a digital backer, you can get a digital um, high res uh, copy, and physical backers will get uh, a physical print. And um, yeah, turnerfamilyterrors.com Turner is, uh, yeah, the link's thrown in there. Uh huh. Yeah. So how how are you feeling so far? You're you you usually rock like a, uh, a kind of a long campaign. You're over thirty days, like 35, 40 days. Forty five. Like, I go forty five. You go forty five days. Yeah. That's yeah, that's so. that that's and um, uh, what I'm doing is I always usually do a thirty day campaign, but for this one I I took I'm doing a week uh, less. So I'm oh, doing wow. a, I'm doing a 24 day campaign and I'm I'm testing out whether or not um, it is I'll sort of get the same backers the same funding or maybe more maybe a little less um, but basically the idea is that in the middle when we have sort of the, the slow period or the or the um, the dead zone to yeah. kind of to kind of eliminate that a little bit and yeah. so um, so yeah so I'll I'll sort of uh, I'll see, uh, and, and I've seen that as a trend. Um, some people who used to do longer campaigns doing campaigns that are a little bit shorter. And then, um, I saw your campaign and you you take a little, you take a different approach. You're, you're, you have it on there for longer. Cause I imagine you're, you're so busy doing all the stuff that you do that it's, it's, it's nice to have a little bit longer of an opportunity on the platform. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of interesting because for me, it's like I like to take my time doing stuff. It's not that I'm a slow poke. You know, you know me. I'm very animated a lot of the time, you know, yeah. all over the place. Um, and I manage CAPS as well. So that's Comic Art Professional Society. So I'm like the president of that. So I'm working on those things. But it's like, I don't know. I hate dagger cards. I hate you too. <laughs> he, I think he's a contributor. Hey, dagger, by the way, you could go and contribute to Turner Family Terrors you actually will get a print. Now, if you do digital on both mine and his, if you back both of ours, you'll get a digital print if you do digital. But if you do a physical, you'll get a physical print signed by both of us. What's up, dog cards? How you yeah. doing? I think it's Dagger. Ma dagger. There we go. Dagger and then Madness Comic Network. Yeah, that's and a problem. That is so cool. Yeah, dude. So nice. I think you backed it, but if you didn't, because I'm like dealing with stuff. Dagger. If you back it, then back. If you haven't backed mine already, do so. And then jump on Rob and back his. So jump on that because that's what we're offering. I'm. This is the one that I'm drawing now on the draw stream. So, yeah, I, I'm dropping so the link. You, Go on. I was just going to say, so looking at your campaign, you crossed um, 50% today. Yeah. So yeah. that's great with 29 days left. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. I'm very happy about that because A, because it's kind of like you kind of don't know where the money is going to come from. And I kind of got to the point where it's like I'm not really um, in, you know, I'm not really in like high push mode. Not that I don't post. You do see me post. Yeah, it's just like, but there's only so much you can do other than just post and get it out there or just get the word out. Yeah. And I've kind of accepted that. And I'm not saying that, you know, oh, well, this, but I used to have the worst anxiety. I don't want to say attacks, but I used to be 
way more fired up. But when yeah. I started Kickstarter initially, I was kind of worried, but because I think this year has been weird economically for people. So it's like everybody's like going, oh, this, and you hear a lot of talk, um, which I understand. But what's happy is good is like the WGA strike is over. So, hey, that would be an influx of income that could possibly coming in. Yeah. So, hooray. Because there, I was reading the terms, by the way, for the guys, for the record, I am not WGA. I have friends that have it, but I read the memorandum. And it's like some of these changes are due to take immediately. So the pay increases and stuff. So it's like, that'll be a welcome thing. I hope they get compensated for the time that they were not working because that'd be nice. Yeah. And then that way, cause I know a lot of our friends are mutual friends are in the WGA and that was stressing them out and yeah, more power. I mean, they, they had a lot of good reasons why, I mean, there was like more creative, like um, allowances and everything because one thing that I didn't know that happened was, which is kind of shitty, is that, especially in Disney, the writers would write a script, right? Mm-hmm. doesn't matter what affiliation or whatever, they would write a script. The shareholders would get a part of it, would get it and say, no, you need to put all these things in here. And if the writer pushed back in any way, they would be fired, blacklisted, and not paid. Wow. And so huh. their union lawyer had to sue which will take its process in itself for their wages, which is bullshit. Yeah. So I'm glad that they won the strike and I'm glad that the actors did it in solidarity because they both involved AI and long and short, they were trying to they. the thing is, I think from my interactions with AI and I've been kind of viewing the whole landscape of it and everything and I'll, and Don, yeah, it's like working on something or Michaela, so kind of, Hey too, totally. But, yeah, check it out. The links I just put the links up for both Turner Family Terrors. I'm drawing the print right now for it, um, and we're gonna sign it. If it's physical, if you back both of our campaigns that are physical, and we back both of our campaigns that are digital, you'll get a digital copy. So, what's kind of oh, here's my orange cat right here. <laughs> so, what it is is that, uh, but yeah, so like it involved AI, but there's a lot yeah. of trends now that are going on about it. First of all, like the DC court ruled that you couldn't copyright AI artwork anyway. Mm. Um, I got into an argument with somebody and they were like saying, well, you're an elitist or something. I'm like, uh, legally, it's not proving profitable, guys. You can't copyright it, you know? Mm. And number two, it's like, even if it's copywritten, you're going to have to pay the past copyrights of all the cor- works you acquired. It's kind of like music when you mix things. Yeah. You know, like people would mix songs into it. So, um, and then they have to pay the royalty. So it's kind of the same thing. So with, so with, the, and they're kind of proving that true, even though you can't copyright it at all. Yeah. But even like they found out, I think open, yeah, like, sorry, this little noodle. I have a cat that's like a noodle and a toddler at one. So what ended up happening was, is that um, they are realizing, because like there was an open chat GPT lawsuit that was going against big names, like big art authors, like Grisham and, uh uh george r like r r tom like the guy who did game of thrones george r r R. martin r r martin thank you my brain is all scrambled and all over the place so george r r martin so he's all over the so these big names are suing because like chat gpt is acquiring their copyrighted work saying yeah we're going to use this it's like no you don't so they're suing about that Mm. so it's already the trend that that's not going to be good um you know i was talking with my sister who's doing a children's book um, Henry Doodle Don't. Um, it's her first book. She's a retired teacher. And so I'm helping her out with that. That's why another reason why I'm kind of looking at children's books uh, these days. And uh, another reason why I picked up uh, the, de- the Demon Bitch uh, uh, children's book uh, that you can get now in, in Christie's Kickstarter. Uh, but my sister, I was, I was at a wedding uh, uh, this weekend, and she said that as she's starting out and kind of meeting people, uh, one woman asked her, "Are you hiring an artist, or are you using AI?" And I was like, "Wow i I hadn't even I hadn't thought about that. Like, I this was the first time that, and it's probably gone on for a while, but I've just been oblivious to it. Um, and I because that." I would never even think about that. Like, yes. obviously, you're writing, you're doing a book, you hire an artist. And yeah. so, um, she, but she said that I guess there's AI has got crept into that. And um, so uh, that was, that was really surprising to me and a little scary, but I guess, you know, we just need to like push back. 
with all of that and continue to, you know, hire, art, obviously hire artists <laughs> to, uh, to draw your books. Well, the thing is that what I see a legitimate thing for AI art is only this reference. Like if a writer is going like, cause they're going to send you pictures anyway. Like that's mm -hmm. in my experience, like talking with you or anything like that. Like, I kind of want this to look kind of Terminator look and, you yeah. know, I want this to look post, like the, they'll send you pictures of actual known content to say, this is kind of what I'm looking at. By no means are they saying copy it, but they're saying, give me a look, give me a visual. So, you know, there, some people I've known have used AI art as reference only. I want to stress reference only. They still hire an artist. They just send it to the artist and say, like, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And the artist will draw it, you know, in yeah. general. So it's not, I think, I think that's kosher because it's combining ideas, but yeah. I think it's kind of reminds me of this argument of Dolly the sheep, you know, human cloning, like oh, back yeah. in 96, how they're like, yeah. oh, there's, they're going to do human cloning, cloning. It's like, even though we weren't close to that, I think it made people uncomfortable enough to put down rudimentary laws to say, okay, if we get there, we're not totally like going into uncharted territory. We're just going to clone 5,000 like Roberts and Christie's and shit apiece. Yeah. You know, or just acquire their DNA. I mean, because they one of the genetics ones was um, I think her name was Lax or something. She was the she was a black woman. Her cervical cancer cells were taken and not inappropriated mm. back in the fifties. She had long since died of the disease, but they used her cells in all this extensive research. And I think the family finally said, "No, you don't get to do that. You took it without her permission." And so you know, you have like a lot like things that are acquired like akin to that. But yeah, so it's just like, as I said, with what we're finding out on these things, it's like, you know, it's better just to have a regular artist. And I think with the actors, what one of the major gripes they had yeah. to do in solidarity is that I think it was for the video game version of the artists themselves. Like there's a section of artists in SAG-AFTRA that there's a section that does like mocap and stuff like that for video games because they're okay. all big names now. Yeah. And I think they even had, well, now Elliot Page, but at the time, Ellen Page, they had Willem Dafoe and all these things. They, they were scanning them, putting them in things. And one of the things that they said, it was kind of like they think they were trying to operate on a shutter stock level. Like we take your picture and we can just use it as stock. Yeah. So they were trying to do that. And the artists were like, oh, hell no. You know, so, yeah. I mean, actors, so I see their point in that. And it didn't help that the studios were doing and saying shitty little things like, you know, um, like, oh, I just want these people to like lose their homes to, I don't know yeah, why. That was I a nice little cherry plum. Yeah, that I mean, was a weird come on. Thing. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, I guess they could be that arrogant, but I think it was just some sort of weird program thing. I, I, I don't know what it is, but yeah. I don't think, I, I think that was very weird to prohibit for a person like that to say it. It's, I know we yeah. have our ideas of CEOs, but it's like, even that's stupid to say of a CEO, like, you know. Yeah. But there's also other ones where I think they were trying to use it. Disney was kind of, Disney's kind of like the gotten the shit list of people where they also try to use AI in secret wars to promote it. And it looked really mm. weird. They found out and they didn't even look any better during the strike. So oh, I yeah. think that's why the studios like really were like, yeah, yeah. Go, going into the Kickstarter, I, I didn't really know. I was, I, I didn't really have like an anticipation or, um, a, a certain goal in mind. Um, I, I was kind of expecting this is my campaign to potentially do maybe a little bit less in funding just because like you said, it was a kind of, it's a precarious time right now. A lot of people are just basically out of work. And yeah. so, um, so it's nice to know that the, the strike is, um, looks like it's going to, going to end. And, oh, it ended, um, it ended at 1201. It officially did today or yeah, yeah everything, um, everything, everything signed and sealed and delivered on that. Yeah. Cause I saw like some of the W the WJ writers that I knew. Okay. And, um, they said strike ends at 1201. Yeah. And it was this morning. Okay. So that's good. Um, I think what it was in the meantime, cause they took about a day to deliberate for yeah. a few days and then they said, okay, right now we are not at the picket line, but we are going over to, but we're going to go support the actor. So go to the actor's picket line. Yeah. So okay. there's that. Cool. So, yeah. They, well, they kind of fuck Hollywood, but in a good well, way. Well, while you're look, drawing, I will, I'm going to see um, right now. Okay. So we, for Turner Family Terrors, um, you can go to uh, turnerfamilyterrors.com. And um, uh, check out the page. 
we fund we've been doing pretty well we funded in 48 hours Yay. and and uh, now we're up to 117 backers which is amazing backers we have we've been uh, on Kickstarter for about a week a week and a day and um, right now we're we started our stretch goals um, last night or yesterday and we already went past one of them uh, we're gonna like up our first stretch goal. We are, we're gonna upgrade our comic, um, paper stock, and then the digital. We're adding you know, behind the scenes material, and then uh, we're about two hundred bucks away from our next stretch goal. Uh, we're gonna create a special thanks page in our digital, and everybody gets their name uh, as a credit in the back of the book. And so um, yeah, and then we unlocked our midweek bonus uh today our digital bonus any new backer at any level even a buck they get 10 uh bonus digital uh indie comics and so um a bunch of these comics are from uh a lot of my friends and colleagues and um yeah it's, it'll be cool to um show off their work and let our backers uh get a big bag full of comics and hopefully they can find their next favorite um, indie creator. And uh, yeah, that expires uh, in a, on Friday, October 6th. And nice. so, um, yeah, so we're, 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 we're transitioning from our early bird rewards now to our stretch goals and um, campaign bonuses. So uh, always trying to give everybody more free stuff along the way. And, uh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. It says the thing about AI being used in creative works is probably, yeah, that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it is that it was bound to happen. They're just working it out right now. Pretty much. But yeah, they're just getting, putting on guidelines because we're nowhere close to replacing artists, but you know, we want to yeah. other creative people, but we want to address it before it gets to be a problem. That's how the human race works generally. So Ah, hold on. So you're in Clip Studio Paint Pro. Yeah. And you are a, as opposed to Photoshop. Do you do both yes. or are you, uh, have you transitioned over to Clip Studio and that's kind of what you've been using for a long time or? So I can use Clip Studio Paint, right? Okay. So it's like Clip Studio Paint I like better because it's more geared for comics and manga. Okay. And Photoshop to me, I've tried it, but it looks clunky. It looks pixelated. I've always had some issues with it. So I keep it around so that if I could change file formats, but other than that, it's I just use it for that personally. Okay. So demon bitch, I hate you all. Let's see here. So I'm going to scroll through as you're doing this. I'm going to sure. I'm going to go through your page, and I'm just going to see what you. How many books do you have in here? You have the children's book, but you also have a I bunch have of other books, right? Yeah, I have a graphic novel that's coming out. I try to come out every year with a graphic novel. It's a compilation of the cartoons that I make. But it's also like um, art people or art things. You get what I mean? Like uh, I have other artists doing the fan art as well. Okay. And then I have other things like where I do, let's see, not only the fan art, but uh, fan art. And then I just put in sketches and other things like that. So it's like a graphic novel. It's usually like 90 to 100 pages on average. Okay. And, um, I'm publishing that. So when you get it, you can, there's a PDF version of each, the kid's book and the graphic novel. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then, but you actually get that. And it's like, um, if you get the PDF versions, that's great. But the physical versions, I will sign them personally and write rude things in them if you want me to. And also the selling point is that every time you pledge, I get a root, I give you a rude thank you note. That's fucked up. <laughs> I think I I remember that from uh, 
the last demon bitch that I got. Oh yeah. Which, which was the kind of the COVID edition. It was all the stuff that you did during the pandemic. Yeah. It was called triggered because everybody was triggered. Yeah. It's like everybody acted like an asshole. I don't care who I want. Like. <laughs> but yeah, so I did that. And then I came up with, um, of I am shipbird because I've had more than one person come up to me and tell me, Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You drew that character of me. Fuck you. And I'm like, what? I don't even know you. And they're like, like, yeah, you know me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, going, okay, let me tell you something. I already ran into four or five of you already. You're not special. And then they get madder at me for that too, because it's like, they, they want me to, I don't know what it is. They wanted to single me out or whatever. And so one per a couple of people come out and then they said, Oh, you drew me. I'm shippered. I'm shippered. I'm shippered. I'm like, <laughs> all right then. Well, guess what? I'm going to make a pin. But we were laughing because it's like one of my friends was like going like, so this person thinks that so this person identifies with a piece of shit. They identify with a fucking piece of shit. That's hilarious. It's it's not a hard to see in with my book. <laughs> all the care, all the characters are uh, the dad is Bob and I'm Rob. My wife is uh, Lauren and in Turner Family Terrors, it's Laura and Maddie and Sophia, my, my son, Max, my daughter, Sadie. And so, oh, okay. um, uh, and then every now and then there'll be some like weirdness that happens on the street and they'll talk to a, uh, one of my neighbors, uh, uh, one of the neighbors in the book. And then uh, I'll, I'll be walking down the street and my neighbor will be walking his dog and he's like, wait a minute, was that me in the book? And I was like, yeah, that was you. And so they get, they get a kick out of that. And one of the things that we do in our book is we have cameo illustrations. And so, so far I think we've had something either like 16 or 20 cameo illustrations. So um, tons of people have been drawn into the book, into the background and um, even if you don't, and that's a tier right now, um, or one of the uh, tiers for the Turner Family Terrors one through four um, Kickstarter. And um, sometimes even, even if you don't uh, ask to be put in, uh, I will find a way, I'll run it by you. And my, my sister is in the book uh, as, uh, as, a, as one of the, uh, I think she might even have a speaking role in issue two. And uh, I saw her this past weekend at a wedding and I kind of reminded her that, oh yeah, you, uh, you, you made it in the book, um, a couple issues back. Um, so I got the demon B meets <laughs> Mr. F word, uh, uh, children's book from, uh, your Kickstarter. Tell me a little bit about how you came up with this idea to do a children's book. Well, I've done kids books before. I've worked with other clients doing kids books. I've really, I recently finished another one. I, I can't announce it until it's publicly officially announced if I get an okay from the actual author, but I worked on that. I've worked on a few other kids books with um, the Olive House and I made a mock um, kids book, which is also available in personal monster in the Kickstarter as personal monsters. Uh -huh. So you have that and um, you know, it's really well, it's, done well at that point um but yeah it's just basically a monstrosity of personality then i thought like i remember on a sitcom somebody mentioned like oh yeah your book was rejected it's called something something meets mr F or no it was a book called meet mr f word and i think it was like bosom buddies or something like a long time ago like yeah. i watched right around when that came out so i was a kid and then um i was kind of like hmm what do i do here so i went on there and i started um so I went on there and I uh, kind of like the thing is, if I'm truly inspired, like the story comes out and it was just like demon. Bi I'll just say demon bitch because we're talking in the context of the book. Um, but demon bitch, basically, she's walking around. People are throwing garbage at her because they hate her. And then they she meets this guy who's crying and he, he says, like, I can't say my name. I can't do anything. Blah, blah, blah. It hurts da, 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 because nobody can say my name because awful things happen. But then he finds out he's really important, more important than he gave himself credit for. And of course, demon bitch steals his wallet and stuff. And, you know, it's just to show that bad people, sometimes if people try to help you, they're not really good. So it's yeah. kind of like teaching a kid. It's weird because like, I actually got Stephen Prince to read it because he has yeah. children. Maybe yeah. that's 
the best example because you know steven's kids are very intense children they're very sweet kids but the stories he's told me around the house are like wow like he was like one of the ones that he said was vincent i i don't know if you're familiar with him but vincent his son i haven't they, oh you know i i might have met his you know, I think I met his son, yeah, his son at, yeah. at free at free comic book day. Yeah, he was there. Yeah, he and was there. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like this, like he was telling Stephen was telling me, like, literally his son was doing this, like, this is my fuck finger, <laughs> like walking around the house. <laughs> and then he told me like his daughter, Rain, who is younger, she wasn't there that day, but she would be walking around and she's like. Yeah, they're they're very intense. Kids, kids love it. Kids love giving the finger. Yeah, so, it's so like, much, so much so that it, it that uh, it's the final panel in issue one of uh, Turner Family Terrors. Um, oh yeah, and uh, so um, yeah, so oh, and I think I read somewhere you were saying that kids really love your artwork, and yeah. and but <laughs> and, but I'm curious about is like they love your artwork but it's not for kids. So what's the delicate dance that you do like at conventions or just in general about kind of exposing your artwork to a younger audience and having them kind of appreciate the artwork, but they can't, you can't show them a lot, a lot of the stuff, you know, so tell, tell me a little bit about that. Okay, so this is how it kind of happened. This is how stuff happened. All right, so this is funny. So with turn with with Demon B meets Mr. F word. I didn't intend to do a kids book. What happened was is that I would be at conventions, right? Yeah. And the the parents would come up with children, like young children, right? And they said, "Oh, it's okay if we read your book." I'm like, <laughs> "Sure." Or, or I'd like hand it off to the parent, right? Like, "Oh yeah, would you like to look a book that's angry?" I'm selling it to the parent because you know it's like I kind yeah. of read it as PG thirteen and up. Okay. So she read it. They open it up and they read it, and it's like, like they read it and they go like, "Oh," and they'll they'll actually sit in front of their kid. They'll actually show it in front of the kid. Look, you could be a comic artist like she does. And my words have bitch and fuck. And we talk yeah, about yeah. Certain, I mean, I, obviously you've read some of my books. It's like it doesn't go explicitly into sex or anything, but yeah, it yeah. is implied. Like it's just it's like smart. if you know, you know. Yeah, it's 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 smart F words. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, fuck and shit and all that. But what's yeah. even funnier is is that they did that. Oh God. And so I just sat there and like one of the turning points was like. I had, I said, why not for an all ages show? So I submitted to all ages shows, like there's ValorCon, and then there's another one called Cartoon Palooza. And we had a talk because it says demon bitch and everything. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, demon bitch. Yeah, that's, that's fine. And then they're going like, yeah, well, you know, and then after the show, they'd be like, you know, we were kind of concerned that you would have that because of demon bitch, but it's like, you were really cool. So come back. So it's kind of funny. So one of the people at ValorCon even told me, like I met like these parents at ValorCon and we got in the subject of drug abuse because I was talking to the mom and it was kind of in a farming community. And unfortunately, like a lot of small towns and farming communities will have a like an influx of meth. It's just fucked up yeah, in yeah. California. Like what were nice kind of cute like towns were like, or just quiet towns, like have all this shit in them, which is really sad. So we were, I was sitting there and we were um, talking and um, mom was reading it and the daughter was like, what's meth? And so I, I'm, I'm a product of D.A.R.E., D -A -R -E, you know, remember yeah. the, the drugs of something like yeah. that? Yeah. I just forgot what it was. But D.A.R.E. to yeah. keep your kids off drugs and yeah. the yeah, uh, and just, just say no campaigns of like yeah. the, the, the 80s and early 90s. Yeah, yeah. And then so what yeah. ended up happening was is that he said, um, so I, I – I just looked at her and you know how they used to scare us like oh if you overdose or you get addicted you turn into this and yeah. you'll cry or this horrible death and vomit and surprisingly that doesn't deter people that much which is weird <laughs> but i did this i looked at her i said it's she said you know i just said to her hey um you know um you know that person you really hate and the little girl was like yeah and i said well, that's what meth turns you into. She's like, 
like she got it and her mom's like uh-huh like that and it's like i told the guy who ran it who teaches actually teenagers like preteen and teenagers and he was like going that was actually really good what you said because it's like yeah you can like he and i are the same generation it's like we both yeah. have dare and all that other shit yeah but now it's this yeah, it's interesting, especially now having kids that are getting a little bit older. My son is about to turn twelve, and so there are all these conversations that I'm gonna that I'm starting to have, and that I'm going to have with him about stuff like drugs and uh, puberty and all this, all these things that are <laughs> about to happen, and so. Um, yeah no birds and the bees yet huh uh, oh yes yes oh okay. yes yeah but a lot of that stuff i'm too embarrassed about so i'm usually if they have a question about something i i'll grab if i'm on the couch i'll grab my blanket and like pull it over my head and uh my, they then turn to my wife and she's uh she'll explain uh, everything and be completely honest and it's good. It's good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just now, uh, yes. Drug abuse resistance education. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Like I think most of the people that went, kids went through there, they did a lot of weed and alcohol at least. Yeah. So my, um, so my friend, uh, Rob Moltari who does night wolf, he did, yes. I, I think it was his first um, children's book recently. And then I saw that you had your children's book uh, six months ago, nine months ago or a year or so. My sister said that she was doing her first children's book. And so I've been collaborating with her and that's going to be on Kickstarter in uh, a few months. Oh, and nice. yeah, that was pretty cool. She was like, Rob, you know, I've seen you, you take your work and you, you get it out there and you creating an audience and um you've inspired me i i have a book and i'm just gonna i'm gonna go for it and i was like yes yes you do that you you go for it and nice. um she found an artist wonderful artist in turkey and they've been collaborating and they have like three more pages or something uh so i was at a wedding this weekend and i got to see her and my brother and I sat down for uh, an hour or two, and we had our first like Kickstarter uh, powwow, where we just exp I just explained all the stuff that I've learned over the past five campaigns. So, um, so yeah, so it's ch children's books. That's what I'm gonna after this one. I'm gonna be pivoting over there and uh, uh, seeing. Uh, becoming a little bit more familiar with it. Maybe, maybe at that point I'll have, um, demon B meets Mr. F word. And, uh, I can, <laughs> I'll get some inspiration from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'm going to show you what it looks like the pen thing right now. Do, 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 do. I kind of wanted them on top of a mountain. I don't know why I kind of called for it. I didn't know if it was a mountain or if it was a, a boxing rink. I first um, I wanted I, to do kind of a boxing ring, but then I it's saw not. that. Yeah, I saw the lines and I was like, okay, maybe she's doing a boxing rink. But this is, if you're leaning this, this is more kind of epic in scale. Um, you know, I think it called for a mountain. I think that's what it was. Okay. It had to call for a mountain. There you go. Uh, So you have 29 days left yes. and you're halfway to your goal with 84 amazing backers. I know. And I you have lots of, you have lots of goodies in here. You have like ma magnets and pins and patches and all sorts of swag that people oh, can yeah. get. And yeah. they can pick up all your, yeah, you've, that was the thing with add-ons. Add-ons now. I had used add-ons in the past, but I have so much stuff now. I just I'm, I'm I was like, do I just do certain add-ons like t-shirts and anthologies or do I put every single thing that I could possibly sell onto Kickstarter? And like is that is that too cumbersome? 
Um, I so think I'm advertising gonna... as rewards in themselves would be cumbersome because you want to focus on the current content and maybe feature a little bit of the older stuff. Yeah. But I would say that all the other stuff, it wouldn't be too bad. You know, like, yeah, I've had pe I've had backers say, Hey, I, I, I can't see this combination. Is there a way I can get an add on? And so I've added, a, I've added a few, um, but there's a, there's a potential for me to add on a whole bunch of stuff. And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out if that's like too, is that's like sensory overload and then they, they don't get anything. Um, or if I should put everything there and then people could kind of snoop around and see if they see anything they like. Mm -hmm. So I'll figure that out soon yeah. enough. So Turner family terrors have, we have, uh, 16 more days mm -hmm. and we, we are funded. Thank you so much to our awesome, uh, you know, we're at 117 backers and mm -hmm. we're, we're doing stretch goals and we're opening up uh, uh, bundles. We have our new um, mid-campaign uh, indie bundle. We launched 10 bonus comics for any backer, even a buck. And uh, yeah, we're ro rolling along. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Definitely, definitely, yeah. So you <laughs> have, you, oh, the, the first day I met you was um, at Stephen Prince's book signing for one, for one of his for maybe Afro Afro Apocalypse, I think um, at the Comic Bug, you uh -huh. were so nice. You gave Steve a a, a box of chocolates. Yeah, that was, uh, this is a very very lovely um, uh, gesture. And then I got your book, and Steve wrote the foreword for. Uh, I think he wrote the foreword for Triggered, uh -huh. and um, he has also written the the foreword for. Um, Miss, mm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher the title here. Let's see what it is. Demon B meets uh, Mr. F word. Um, how, how'd you meet? How'd you meet Steve? Oh God, I don't remember. I think it was either WonderCon or Comic Con, and of course it was just me messing with him half the time because we get really bad. So as I said, we had kind of a feud at Free Comic Book Day because he didn't tip me for a sketch, so I gave him crap for it. <laughs> I mean, again, I'm not really angry, but he's, and I just said, because, okay, we make fun of each other's heritages. Okay. Let's just be very frank. Okay. So like what ended up happening is that I think I messaged him once and I said, Hey, Frank, and Hey, Steve. Uh -huh. And what it was, it was one of my other Kickstarter campaigns and somebody had asked, somebody had sent me a dick pic. Okay. Not, <laughs> not going to lie. That was pretty, it's like, I don't get the normal ones. I get the ones that are like malformed or weird or something. I don't get very many at all in general. Like, People don't send it to me, and that's good. I'm glad. I guess if they see demon bitch, like, oh, she's going to curse it or something where it falls off or some shit. Anyway, there looked like something wrong with this guy's wiener because basically, like, it looked like he smashed the head part into the door quite a few times. And it, it didn't look right, you know. And so literally when I saw that sent to me, I, like, literally my words fell out of my mouth and onto the keyboard, and I wrote down... And I wrote down, wow, that looks malformed. And I screenshot it while it was still there. And then the guy deleted it and said, oh, I'm sorry. That was meant to somebody else. I'm like, really? Wow. So I told Steve and I said, hey, I got a dick pic. What do you think of this? Like, just like, I was like, damn. So I sent it to him and he wrote back. He says, I think you hate me by all the stuff you send me. <laughs> so it kind of went on from there. And then he drew a dick, uh, like a dick on a post-it note. And he put it up like on my desk. I mean, yeah. not on my desk, but on my table, LACC. And I stood up. I said, who the fuck did this? Who the fuck did this? You know, fuck you. Like, who did this? I mean, I wasn't mad. It was sort of like, I know so many people that would do that to me because we just fuck around all the time. Yeah. And David, I only just, like, just sold him out immediately. He said, oh, yeah, he's over there. <laughs> so <laughs> I, he just said, and I guess Steve posted on Facebook about something. And he said, oh, yeah, you left a dick pic on my dad, on my table. But I put up the post-it note so his wife wouldn't think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he just, like, he put it there. He's, like, and later on, he told me, I was, like, good. He was, like, no, don't, don't, you know, because he, he didn't want Haley to, like, get upset at him. But it, yeah. it, but I put up the post-it note. It wasn't, like, an sure photo of anybody. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it kind of went on from there. And one of the things that I um, did was that I had somebody come up to him and 
oh, this is bad. <laughs> we get bad, you know? So one of the things, like I saw these menorah style things over at um, like where I live, I live in, um, so when I went to LA and I went to one of the malls, they had these like menorah style things as a trees, right? Um, I swear to God, I'm not anti-Semitic, but <laughs> so they look like trees. So I took pictures and then I sent it to Steven. I said, Hey, look, dude, Jew trees. And he says, Psh, that's something like against like Christianity or whatever. They shouldn't adopt the Christian things of Judaism. Or, I, I don't know, some shit. Right. Yeah. So later on, like one of the cosplayers I knew, he cosplays as Luke Cage. He had a really beautiful, like world tree, Yig Drossel tattoo. But I noticed yeah. the roots look like the menorah candle trees over at the mall that I was at. I said, oh, go over there. There's Stephen Prince. Go up to him and point to your roots and say Jew tree. And he told me he when he went over and did that, Stephen was like <laughs> trying to find out. So it's yeah. in this like running joke. So I probably sound like a big asshole now, but it was funny. <laughs> so we just make we we just rag on each other all the time. But he's a really Quite Quentin, he's he asked, Are you making a parody of Golden Books, famous children's book? And so uh, so a little bit about my book, Turner Family Terrors. Um, it is a horror comedy um, family adventure. Um, think uh, The Simpsons uh, meets Hellboy. Um, it is about a sweet suburban but utterly dysfunctional family, the Turner family, um, as they are tasked with saving the world from a ragtag gang of monster morons. Um, it's, got, it's got a little bit of a Scooby-Doo um, look to it. And the jokes are like a Rick and Morty or a South Park. And I'd say our biggest influence is um, Mel Brooks's Young Frankenstein. Oh, God. And, I remember that. and it's, awesome. yeah, it's basically the, the kind of like that um, uh, classic black and white uh, monster look um, crossed with an absurd over the top comedy. And for my book, um, the comedy follows a uh, family of four uh the turners as they try to navigate their own dysfunction and traverse the pitfalls of parenthood um so in many regards it's like a personal story for me and i was telling christy that um i always tell people that i'm just like this bumbling dad who is uh trying to not uh, piss off his wife and screw up his kids so it's like a, a Turner Family Terrors is like a uh, it's a personal story for me. I get to write about my own anecdotes, uh, my own of my own frustrations, my own joys and sadness, but mainly lean into the humor um, and kind of crank that humor up to eleven while layering on monster stories and myth and mystery and action adventure, urban fantasy, but with like a healthy dose of dick jokes and um, spit takes. So if you roll all that up and smoke it, you get um, Turner Family Terrors. Smoke so them if that's, you got them. Smoke them, yeah, smoke them if you got them, exactly. Dark and so right um, we are on, uh, we're on Kickstarter for like six, 16, more, 16 more days. And uh, we funded in uh, 48 hours. And it's been, it's been really good. We've had a great week so far. Um, and what's cool about Kickstarter and running a campaign is that you don't quite know what's going to happen over the month and it gives you an opportunity to kind of come up with fun, new things that you can add to your campaign. And so a few days ago, I was trying to think of what's the next thing that I wanted to do something fun. And then, so I thought, I thought, um, well, let me see if Christy wants to do uh, an exclusive like pinup. And so we could use our characters from um, both our comics and um, backers of both campaigns will get uh, signed limited edition uh, pinups of uh, the artwork. And so, um, so yeah, so here we are and um, Christy's doing her thing which is yeah, right? fun, fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, one of those things. Like I like, I like mixing the textures together. So sometimes I'll do like the background first or whatever first, then I'll color it or something and go from there. But uh, so it's kind of funny. Cause like Sophie's fighting demon bitch. So it's like, they don't like each other cause she demon bitch steals things and she's an asshole. So obviously 
Sophie loves her family, even though they're kind of dicks, but they make, they love her too. And I purposely kind of drew it messed up and messy. I don't know why, because that's just how it works for me. Yeah. I think in this issue, she's, she's fighting off some sort of evil, evil queen and he's trying to kidnap her or, or bring her over to the dark side. And she says that she, she already has a family uh, even though they are a bunch of assholes. I think I read um, that one. Yeah. yeah she's, uh, she's, she's sticking with them. Yeah. So it's like, Ooh, let's see here. Let's see. Okay. I'm just saving this real quick. But yeah, I'm wondering what colors I should do it. Because, I mean, there's like a lot of colors. I think she's a blonde, right? Sophie's a blonde. She's, yeah, blonde, uh, blue eyes. Like, what is she supposed to turn into? Because I see her do a monstrous thing, but I don't know if it's a demon or what. It's what kind is she of a cross that? between a vampire and a demon, kind of a, a princess of darkness, kind of. Oh, that's why they want her, because it's it, like that. Yeah, she's sort of like this all-powerful... She's uh, uh, presence and um, the forces of evil are trying to kind of harness her power and bring her over to their side. And um, so, uh, so yeah, so and she's got all sorts of uh, powers. So she's not sort of simply a vampire. She's kind of the, 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 the evil, uh, nature is, is, is ramped up a, a, a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm just trimming this. Cause like she has sure. kind of like long kind of tentacly hair for like Medusa, but yes, yeah. that's kind yeah, of, like she's sort of, she's the adopted daughter of the you kind of find that out in in the beginning of issue one so she's sort of the adopted um daughter of course they uh they adopted her from an orphanage uh in transylvania oh. so so um nothing could go wrong with that right uh but uh, everyone else in the family is like a brunette with brown eyes and she's sort of a standalone blonde with blue eyes and mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see here. Do you have your own um, brushes that you uh, create? or personalize or do you have do you use the stock brushes um there, how do there's you... actually on kicks on, on uh sorry clip sometimes people make their own brushes and i'll download them okay so yes and no um i don't personally have made my common set, custom set i yeah. have had a custom set of brushes in photoshop but I didn't feel, but as I said, Photoshop, the thing that I got kind of annoyed about was that it would get very chuggy. Hmm. Like the, the computer was, uh, like visually, um, what did you, what did you say? Chuggy? Chuggy, chuggy. chuggy. Like it would yeah. just like hog and resources. It would like creep along. Like I put the stylus down and press mm. it. It's like, there's the wheel. And I'm like, or the circle for a piece. Yeah. And I was like, like, why? And like, it would just really mess up with my workflow. So I said, forget it. And I just wanted to find something else And clip studio paint. But as you can tell, the resources are not hogging. The only yeah. thing that sucks is like some of the more brusherly type paints that I mean, pens that I want to use are kind of take a moment. It drags a little. Okay. So yeah, pretty much. What do you work as if you want to ask? Because I know you're on your lunch break. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to pop off in a few minutes. Um, someone's Katrina. She looks like you to fight for just about everybody. Her weapon of choice might be more like a toddler. You don't want to find a nanny for. 
I think Katrina's Katrina B is chiming in here. She looks like she would fight for just about everybody. Her weapons of choice might be more like a toddler. You don't find uh, want to find a nanny for in any way. Um, so, so I'm a video editor. So um, I'm on a. I started a show a, a couple days ago. I thought I was going to have um, a, a little bit more time off, but um, very thankful to be thrown thrown back into work. And so uh, I'm uh, rocking that out. But um, I wish I could stay <laughs> for this entire thing because because I I absolutely love this. I love um, also time lapse videos. Just does Clip Studio do a do a time lapse? You know, I haven't I haven't gone that far to be frank. I, I wish I knew. Um, I haven't really researched it because I usually just do like live action. That seems to be the best thing for me. So it, I, don't, I don't know if it's Clip Studio or if it's um, I don't think it's Photoshop. There's one other program that that uh, Easton, my cover artist, uses, and it creates a, a time lapse of the entire uh, process. So at the end, you get like a, a really cool a time lapse video. Um, well, if you guys a Mac version, it might be the um, it might be the other stuff like the um, mm. it might be Procreate. If he has a Mac, it, it yeah. might be Procreate. Yeah, because Procreate, I know, does that. I haven't okay. used that okay. or anything like that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's great. So, um, all right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this looks awesome, and like this is my favorite part of the process, and I I never get a chance I never get a chance to to watch it while it's going down. Um, so this has been a treat, and um, I'll check out the rest of this video uh, later on. Oh. And yeah, so uh, oh, um, go, really we'll quick, K-pop yeah. junkie, she's like one of the be biggest fans on here. Okay. And if you K-pop, if you want to have him on your show, he can go and be on the show. What it is is she, I was on her show and her and her supporters were great. Okay. And K-pop, just as a heads up, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, sure, yeah. But K-pop, now we have this new thing that if you back both Demon Bitch, a physical copy of Demon Bitch, and a physical copy of Turner Family Terrors, you get this print that I'm working on now. And also, if you do a digital back, if you do a digital backing, you'll get both on each. Yeah. We're going to print those out and I'm going to sign them. I'm going to track Christy down in LA somewhere and we'll get uh, us both to sign those. And yeah, so Kickstarter's rolling along. Um, mm -hmm. Demon Bitch has uh, 29 more days and is at 50%. So um, that is that 49. is awesome progress. I mean. And what'd you say? Oh, I said it's 29. It's not 49. I'm not. Oh, that I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 29. No, 29. no, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, Turner Family Tarot's, uh, we, um, we have like 16 more days and uh, it's cool. We're, we're having fun. We get to do uh, cool uh, crossovers like this. And um, that's the, that's the fun part about Kickstarter. You get to, for me as a writer, I'm always trying to find ways to um, uh, collaborate with artists because I can't draw anything, unfortunately. And so um, this is uh, this is great. And so, did you say you're gonna you you're gonna color color this as well? And you're you're so sort of should we do black and white or color? What do you think? Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking color, maybe. Okay. And I would say it could go either way with the variant that um, with the pinup I initially did, but again, you know, we can do, do it. It might be a, it might be a nice kind of uh, like uh, accent um, uh, to it, and then we also we always have sort of a color pinup gallery in the back of the book because the Western Fairy Terrors is a is a grayscale book, so we have a um, pinups are are a color. So if it if you can. And you're already kind of thinking about that. That might that might that, that might be good. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. And uh, also, um, I'm going to run a sponsor because I know you have to go, and I have to take a little restroom break or something. <laughs> yeah. So it's like uh, really dig the variety of artists that you have on the lunch hour at TFT is for the Mucha Inspire cover, right? So I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go and autograph this as well. But 
Yeah. So um, Quentin was asking her which state. It's like we're both in the same state, California. But yeah. Yes. So um, give me a moment. I need to take a quick little break. Um, but I will be right back. I'm going to play yes. a spot. I'll be back in a minute. All right. See you. Thanks, guys. All right. Are you taking off? I Yes. Okay, cool. Dude. Thank you. And I'll pop your link in the thing and every so often. But please, K-pop, if you can reach out to Rob or if you oh, need yeah. info, like message me or something. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Here's his thing. Turner Family Terrors. It has been funded. So you get the book. But we're working on the print right now for the drawstring. And why are you not pasting? Stupid thing. Sorry, I yell at my electronics. That's why they. Okay, so guys, I will be back after the sponsorship. I need to hit the little room. Um, I'll be right back. So right, you take care. Thank you. Hey, Christy, thank you so much for having me on. This was awesome. And um, I will, uh, I'll see you soon. All right. Thank you, Rob. Right. Okay. okay. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye. All right, guys, I'll be right back and I'm going to run a, a little bit of a sponsor right now. Fairview's coffee has mysteriously gone missing. Mayhem ensues when strange, coffee-craving zombies plague the city. Detective Mickey Potatoes, an overworked public servant, uncovers why ordinary citizens are losing their minds and how to stop the coffee apocalypse. But it involves the Mafia. And when you're dealing with Mafia crime families, nothing is ever easy. The Mafia controls everything in the city, including the police, including him. If he breaks the Mafia, they will break him. So, the city is without coffee. The city is burning before his very eyes, but he's powerless. Detective Potatoes has the power to stop the coffee apocalypse. But if he does, he could lose everything. Ah, I sat on my chair wrong. How are you guys? Thanks for waiting. And I magically am back. Mickey Potatoes, right? Yeah, electronics, they deserve it, right? I need to charge my stupid mouse too. So yeah, right now um, we're holding steady at 50%. But I want to have more, you know that. And if you do back Turner Family Terrors, I have read that book. It's fucking funny. It's a mixture of, you know, Venture Brothers and uh, the family of um, the family of fuck, what was it? The family of um, the family of uh, Rick and Morty. So there you go. So let's see here. I'm just also looking at other stuff. What's going on with you today? Love ahead on my say list of free lunch. Yeah, it's a really funny book. And now if you pat, backed me in the physical one, you can get, and if you back him on the physical one, you get a physical print. It'll be like a postcard. We'll both sign it. If you do digital on both, you will go and you will get digital for both. So, you know, some of you already have already backed me physically. So go get a book. It's not going to be that expensive. I think it's actually pretty cheap. So yeah, get both. And then support the Kickstarter. Rob's a cool guy to work with. I also have, um, oh, look, it's Egg Lady. So um, I also have this right here. This is the Turner Family Terrors. That's one of the variant covers. So do check that out. So yeah, that's Sophie right there. It's a really fucking funny book. Trust me. Yeah, it's Egg Lady. There you go. I have, um, I, I said on some, dude, do it, dude. You get that through him as long as you back both, but you got to let him know.
Sophie is actually not as fat as Egg Lady. That's the funny part. Sophie does not look like Egg Lady at all. She's just like, she's just like fighting with, um, with Demon Bitch right here. So there you go. So I got to go flat these colors there too. Sophie looks like Egg Lady. Yeah, definitely. Oh, boy. I love this show, dude. It's so cool. I love drawing, and I have it, love having guests on here, so it's great. Prismatic. I don't know. I put in a link for him, but I didn't get anything. Well, hopefully he'll come on, and if not, then whatever, you know. big white space right there okay fine. sometimes I have to flat it with white so that it'll look normal So I don't know about Prismatic. So yeah, guys, by the way, do us a favor and like and share and subscribe both to my YouTube channel and to the Madness Network. Also, if you can go ahead and throw out, like go ahead and contribute to the Turner Fairy New Terrors, or you have, and to, or to me, that's fine on our Kickstarters. But, you know, just go ahead and, uh, yeah, share it around because Facebook likes to go and try to fuck both of us anyway. So that's, there's that. So yeah, there we go. Be right back making foodies. Dude, make the foodies all you want. I saw an empty shelf for coffee and I thought about detective potatoes, right? There you go. Let me go ahead and pop another thing. So, oh, is everybody at work or what's going on with you guys?
during your shift. Are you at work or are you at the thing? Got the red eyes because she's done a lot of too little too much weed. I was at my day job. So you're at home and you're just doing laundry right now? I just did laundry a little while ago. Not today, but a few days ago. So there you go. I was at your day job. Well, there you go. And there's Shipbird where she's gross and she's like filthy. Cause that's the best thing ever. What woot woot? What what woot woot? Yeah, this is okay. So, Roland, I've been trying to get a hold of you. But the thing is, is that like, for some reason, my freaking Facebook is being an asshole. So it's like, wouldn't let me go and talk to you, which sucked. So here you go. This is to my Kickstarter. Okay. Let me go and state this. And then this is to the Turner Family Terrors. So what this print is, is that it's a print that if not only do you back my Kickstarter, but you also back Rob Krish's Kickstarter, this is going to be the exclusive print available to both you guys. So if you back a digital reward on both of our parts, you'll get a digital version of this print. Now, if you do physical rewards on both of our campaigns, then you get a physical thing for this print as well. So we and we'll both sign it as well. Yeah, please, dude. Like, if you can, back it. We will be very happy that you did. Yeah, take a look. I just threw it in the link. So right now I'm holding steady at 50%. And basically Turner Family Terrors has actually funded at 100%. So you are good.
Oh, no, I, I put the links in there <laughs> this time. It's from my show, so it's like, yeah, I put that in there. But yeah, Pops is on top of it. Oh, that's always fun. Yeah, I hear you on that. Okay, get off. You're not supposed to chew on the paper. My fucking cat's in there chewing on the paper. Let's see. I certainly do. Okay, we're not showing on the paper spam. Drawing on that. Good. Hmm. This kind of reminds you of Callahan or something. So how's everybody doing other than just kind of like chilling at work?
Oh, nice people are sharing. Is this love? There's a really appropriately cringy picture of the demon bitch doing that, which is hilarious. I've been sneezing a lot too, weirdly enough. taking a look at some stuff. Sorry, I've been multitasking. Oh, boy. Her ass, her ass, her ass. Okay, we're looking at Sophie here. Mm, I gotta look at Sophie real quick because Robert gave me some reference for Sophie, so let's see. Okay, I can't open it in here because I don't want to have more shit all over my windows and stuff. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. I kind of have an idea what she's going for, so we'll see. Orlando Magic Nation. What's that one, dude? I can't see the YouTube right now, so it's like I gotta look at this. I'm focusing on this, getting this done. Thank you. So what's seeing what's the right cover for our Sophie? I didn't know she was from Transylvania. I don't know her whole backstory, but the fact that he said that, it's like, oh, okay. And I've seen Rob's daughter, so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I could see that. Would you rather... Oh, okay. I was, like, confused what the hell that was about. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, wow. Um, I just went to the bathroom. So there you go. That kind of tells you something. Whew. I'm not sure about that.
Why going shirts? Okay, cool. Speaking of cool shit, we're at I'm at 50% with Demon Bitch, and what I'm working on is an exclusive print so that if you get back Demon Bitch on a digital level and you back Turner Family Terrors on a uh, digital level, you'll get a digital print version of this. Or you do the physical and you'll get a physical print signed by the two of us. So it's really cool. Little baby, she fucking have sharp teeth and shit. <sighs> so how's that strike, guys? That actually went pretty well. I'm very impressed with that. That sucked that they had to, to go for that long, but that is good. But I'm glad they got it because they needed to take care of some shit. They needed a plus also it's kind of sad. Hollywood has been kind of notorious for fucking people over. So it's good that they do that. Drawing, 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 keep them filled. Things all drawing. Da, 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 da. I think everybody just likes this as an ASMR while I'm talking to myself, which is fine. At least I have some fun things to do today. Yes, I do. I am by joining you, right? Wait, you're joining me? What?
I'm joining you. Oh, okay. Humming and drawing. Oh, okay. Then I'm going to go and get Sophie her sneakers and stuff. So they adopted her from Transylvania, which is interesting. You're having dinner now? I gotta eat. I haven't eaten yet. It's kind of bad that on that. Someone called me. I don't know who. So anyway, I might have to return the call. I don't know who it is. probably do gray sneakers because you know if she's a kid sneakers get kind of dirty maybe i'll do like these little, like little pink sort of bits on it too fried eggs and stuff, right?
Oh, that's the right amount of purple I wanted. Okay. Let's go and do this. Oh, it's spam. Hey, buddy. Somebody sent me something, I don't know what the hell that is. He's a nice boy today. Hi. I think he wants to go and like meet up, but I'm just like, dude, I can't. Also planning this one right up here. Come on. Kind of messy, but I kind of like this aesthetic of messy.
There we go. Two more minutes, man. This is actually turning out to be real nice. This is pretty. What's up, buddy? Ooh, this looks cool. I like this effect. How's Ink? She's doing good. She's working on this. Ink's good. She's lying her ass somewhere. I don't know where it is, but somewhere. Yo, what's up, Orlando? What's this link that you're dropping? Don't know what that is. Sorry. Just in the middle of drawing, so I've got both hands. So 202. Okay, guys, I'm going to go take a break good drawing. I'm going to go and take a moment and kind of lie down because I'm a little tired. But do check out Turner Family Terrors. And let me go ahead and pop that in there. Uh, Turner Family Terrors. Let's pop that in there. And let's go ahead and pop in Demon Bitch. Basically, you back both of them. You'll get a print, either digital or physical. But if you do back digital, you will get the digital. digital and if you get the physical, you get the physical. So talk to you guys. You have a great day and have a good night.
Bye-bye.